Okay, so let's talk a little bit about analyzing the M plus one peak. Uh, again, we may talk about it as being the M plus plus one peak, but we're talking about this peak right here, right there. That's our M plus one peak, and it's due, uh, in this case, this is the mass spec for methane, and it's due to the small amount of methane that has C13 in it. Most methane has C12, but 1% of methane will have C13. So we expect then that this peak to be 1% the size of the base peak for methane because 1% uh, of the molecules will be uh, due to carbon-13. If we go to something slightly bigger, so here we see decane. Decane is a C10 hydrocarbon. It's actually C10H22, okay? And it has a mass of 142. Look how much bigger our M plus one peak is. That's because now uh, we have a much higher probability of having at least one C13 isotope in our molecule because we have 10 times as many carbon. So we actually expect this to be 10 times bigger than it was for the methane peak. So the M plus one peak will become more abundant as the number of carbon atoms increases. So if we compare the height, this is often diagnostic. Uh, for decane, we can do some math and calculate, and we expect that for decane, the M plus one peak is going to be 11.24%. So we can actually uh, use this M plus one peak and the ratio of it to the base peak, the M plus peak. Uh, so the M plus peak divided by the M plus one peak, uh, in this case, equals 11.24%. And that's what we expect. So it's very diagnostic. Why would we get an M plus two peak? So sometimes we can look at things. And for this particular compound, we're looking at chlorobenzene. And what we see is, uh, here's our M plus peak. Uh, we see an M plus one peak, well, which we expect, it's very small. But look at this. This is our M plus two peak. And it's significantly bigger. Uh, if we did the calculation, we would actually find out that the ratio of these two peaks is 76 to 24. Uh, so it's uh, due to the fact that the abundance of chlorine 37 is 24 percent and the abundance of chlorine 35 is 76 percent. So compounds, when we see that 3 to 1 ratio of the M plus to the M plus 2 peak, we want to think chlorine. As soon as we see that, we probably have chlorine in our molecule. Very diagnostic. So as soon as you see that pattern uh, way out here, now notice we don't have that same pattern here. That's because the chlorine is no longer in these fragments. So what you will see, uh, and we'll have problems with it this year, is sometimes you'll see compounds where that M, that ratio of three to one of two peaks that are separated by uh, two mass units may go down, and when they we stop seeing that, that means that the fragments no longer have the chlorine involved. Sometimes the molecule will fragment such that there is still chlorine there, and we should still see that pattern of peaks in a 3 to 1 ratio. There's another very important uh, M plus 2 peak, and that happens to be for compounds that have bromine in them. Bromine has 51% of bromine has an isotope with a mass number of 79. Another significant isotope has two more neutrons in it and has a mass number of 81. So we see a significant number of 
M and M plus 2 peaks at pretty close to a one-to-one -one ratio because that means that bromine is present, present in it. So when we see this particular pattern, the M and the M plus 2 peak are almost the same size. We want to be thinking bromine. If we went back to uh, our table, here we go, you'll see that chlorine and bromine have significant uh, isotopes other than the most abundant one. Bromine is very close. The most abundant one is 50.69%. The next one, which is 81, so 79 and 81 is 49.3. Now, a question I might ask, uh, you'll see, and we're just starting, but I might ask you to compare and contrast the mass spectra for two compounds, chlorobenzene and bromobenzene. So here we have chlorobenzene. Compare and contrast. What does that mean? Well, when we compare them, we see that we have a molecular ion peak and both, I'm sorry, uh, yes, a molecular ion peak with significant M plus two patterns. This is chlorine, we expect to see that three to one ratio. This is due to bromine, we expect to see that one to one ratio. But what's different about them? Well, for chlorobenzene, the base peak has chlorine in it. For bromobenzene, the base peak does not have bromine in it. We then see the significant fragmentation patterns. We see three little blips and here we see three little blips as well at uh, you know 70, 77, right around 50, slightly less than 50. We see the same thing here. Uh, we see the same patterns. That's because the fragmentation when we break off the chlorine, we're left with this phenyl cation. We have a phenyl cation remaining here, and it's also, uh, that's the phenyl cation there at uh, 77. And then uh, it breaks up into these other fragments that should be somewhat the same. But notice in the, the bromobenzene, it's that phenyl cation is the base peak. That's because the carbon-bromine bond is much weaker than the carbon-chlorine bond. So the carbon-chlorine bond is harder to break. And we see less of the phenyl cation. Whereas in the bromobenzene, the carbon-bromine bond is easier to break. So we see a lot more of the phenyl cation relative to the base peak. So that's the information I will be looking for. There we go. That's it for our final.